نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لي صدری و یسر لي امری و احلل عقدتا من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعل لي وزیر من اخلی اللهم فکهنا في الدین رب زدنی علما اللهم انی اسألکا علما نافعا رزقا طیبا و عملا متقبلا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ سورہ المنافقون The surah was revealed in Medina. It has 11 verses, two stanzas. It is the 63rd by the order of arrangement and 104th by the order of revolution. The name of the surah is from uh, the mentioning of Allah in the first verse is Aja'akal Munafikun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has named this surah as Al-Munafikun because of the starting verse, uh, the starting mentioning of the Munafikun, and also it is related to the subject matter of the surah because in this surah, there is a review. There is a review of the conduct and the attitude of the hypocrites of Medina. Regarding the period of uh, revolution, this surah was sent down either during the period when Prophet Sallallahu was returning <coughs> was uh, was returning from his campaign against Bani Mustalik or it was immediately revealed after his arrival in Medina after the battle of Bani Mustalik. So Bani Mustalik, the battle of Bani Mustalik had taken place in Shaban 6 AH. So this is exactly the period of revolution of Surah Al-Munafikun. Now to relate uh, and to understand to understand the behavior which has been highlighted in the verses of Surah Munafikun, the behavior of the hypocrites, which has been highlighted in the verses of um, Surah Munafikun. I would want to explain briefly uh, the historical background of all the uh, hypocrites of Medina. Now we would need to have a look at the history of the hypocrites of Medina. Why did they turn into hypocrites and how did they behave in different stages? Because you remember, you can understand is that this incident, which has been mentioned here in Surah Munafikun, did this does not just occur all of a sudden as a chance happening, but there was a whole series of events behind it, which ultimately led up to it. So before Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam immigrated from Makkah to Medina, there were two tribes, the tribes of Aws and Khazraj. Before the advent of Islam, they were at war. There was a war of about 200 years old war, the Battle of Boaz, which was continuing between the two, bad, uh, the two tribes of Aws and Khazraj with extensive amount of killing and looting and plundering and bloodshed going on between the two tribes of Aws and Khazraj. But when there was the advent of Islam and the nur of Islam reached the people of Aws and Khazraj and the guidance of the divine scripture of Quran, they, they received it, then they were changed and they embraced Islam. And they united and they were unified and they became the Ansar of Medina. So once uh, this all happened, they had almost agreed on the leadership of one man. So once the war between Aus and Khazraj went off and it finished, then they agreed on making one leader of Medina. And this was what the chief of Khazraj, which they decided, Abdullah bin Ubay, to take him as the ruler, the common ruler of Medina. This was a change which came after the advent of Islam, but before the immigration of Prophet Sallallahu to Medina. But what happened was that this was the condition when the voice of Islam reached Medina and the influential people of both the tribes, they started becoming Muslims. This was that. But when Prophet Sallallahu 
at the invitation of the Ansar of Medina, that is the people of Aus and Khazraj, when they invited the oppressed and the persecuted Muslims of Medina to emigrate to Mecca, to Medina, then Prophet Sallallahu and the companions, they accepted the invitation. And when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala ordered Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emigrated from Mecca to Medina, Islam, was by now, it had deeply penetrate, penetrated every house of the Ansar and uh, the Aus and Khazraj. Now, what happened was that when Prophet ﷺ came over to Medina, he was chosen as, and he was appointed as the head of the state of Islamic Republic of Medina. And for this, Abdullah bin Ubay was totally helpless and he did not see any other way to save his leadership than to become a Muslim himself. And uh, he was, although although his heart, in his hearts of hearts, he was totally jealous and he was at a total enmity with the Muslims and even with Prophet Wasallam. His heart was burning with rage from within, but he was also, he was filled with grief because he had been deprived of kingship. So for several years, his, uh, his manner of hypocrisy in faith, it continued and it manifested in different ways. Um, he was not a believer in heart. He was a hypocrite. But what he used to do is that on every Friday, when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to deliver the sermon, he used to, seat, he used to take a seat very close to him. And he would stand up and he would announce that, oh, people, messenger of Allah is present among us by whom Allah has honored you. Therefore, you should support him and listen to what he says and obeys. This was just to create his position and acquire a status of reliability in the state of Medina by proving his sincerity to Muslims so that he might get successful in acquiring and gaining some form of power and authority and position or status in Medina. But on the contrary, his behavior was totally totally like that of a total hypocrite and totally derogatory to in totally in opposition to what he was doing. Like in after the battle of Badr, uh, he, uh, when uh, the, after the battle of Badr, when um, I've just explained about Banu Kenuka, when Prophet Sallallahu had invaded the Jew tribes of Banu Kenuka, it was this man, it was this man, Abdullah bin Ubayi, who stood up for the support of the people of Banu Kenka. And he said that these 700 fighters, they have been helping and protecting the people of Medina against every enemy. And you would cut them down in the morning, then um, I will not leave you until you pardon my clients. So he interceded for the Jews of Banu Kenka to be left and um, he was interceding for them. So this is what he did after the Battle of Badr. Then on the occasion of uh, Battle of Uhud, he committed an open treachery and he withdrew. He withdrew his uh, uh, 300 of his companions. He withdrew from the army, of, uh, from the Muslim army. Because we know that when Prophet Sallallahu marched from Medina, he had an army of 1,000 to face uh, 300, 3,000 troops from the Quraysh of Mecca. But this hypocrite, he broke away with 300 men and hence Prophet Sallallahu was just left with an army of 700 men to meet the 3,000 3, troops of the enemy in the field in the Battle of Ahud. Then in uh, the fourth year after immigration, during the Battle of Banu Nadir, as we have gone through in Surah Hashr, he was the one who came up to Hoyay bin Akhtab, the chief of Banu Nazir, and he told him and he reassured Hoyay bin Akhtab that he will bring 2,000 soldiers and he will support the Jews against their war with Muslims. And if the Muslims exile the people of Bani Nazir, then the hypocrites will also leave Medina in their company. And that is what we have uh, discussed in, uh, in uh, Surah Hashir. And then with all these activities during all these expeditions, his behavior was continuously being exposed. But Prophet Wasallam was continuously overlooking him, being just kind to him, and was just forbearing in his 
behavior with these uh, hypocrites, especially with Abdullah bin Ubay. And uh, Abdullah bin Ubay and all the like-minded hypocrites, they had, uh, they wanted to get an opportunity to, they got the opportunity to accompany Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he went to fight with the people of Bani Mustalik. Now, when they were all Abdullah bin Ubay and the hypocrites, when they accompanied Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the battle of Bani Mustalik, there they, they created all forms of malice and they engineered two simultaneous great mischiefs which could have actually if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had not helped and protected and guided the Muslims they would have actually shattered the Muslim unity to pieces the Muslim unity would have been shattered to pieces if their malice they had succeeded in that so one of the incidents has been narrated in Bukhari Muslim and uh, Musad Ahmad that uh, when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in his way back to Medina after the battle of Bani Mustalik and the Muslims had been victorious when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the army was on their way back and they stopped over at a place, then there was, there was a fight which grew up between uh, an Ansar and a Muhajir. And the issue was about, about the water of a well. There were harsh words between the both of them and uh, Jahja, he kicked Sinan and um, the Ansar, he, uh, he took it as a great insult and disgrace. And then um, Sinan called out the men of Ansar and Jaja, he called out the immigrants for help. And so the Ansar and the Muhajireen, there was a fight between them. And when uh, Abdullah bin Ubayi, he heard about all the fight and the quarrel going about, he immediately came there and he started inciting, he started inciting both the parties so that the whole fight would become, uh, would flare up. And he was an ally to whom? He was an ally to the people of Aus and Khazraj and to the Ansar of Medina. And uh, from the other side, the immigrants also came out and there was an extensive fight. And when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi came to know about it, and when he was informed, he came out of his camp and he said, that are you trying to make, now Zubila, are you trying to make the fun of the verses of Allah and the commandments, you're trying to mock the commandments of Allah, although I am there very much presence among all of you. And then Prophet Sallallahu also announced that what is this? What have you to do with such a call? Leave it, it is a dirty thing. What? The mutual fight between the Muslims, the Muslim brothers who are what? They are in the Malmuminuna Ikhwa. When they start fighting, it is something dirty, it is something filthy, it is something unlawful. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi stopped them from doing all that. And what happened during the whole process was that Abdullah bin Ubayi, he was continuously, he was continuously, he was instigating them and he was inciting the Ansar. And what he came out with, he said that this is what you have done to yourselves. He addressed the Ansar of Medina, the people of Os and Khizraj, and he said that this is what you have done to yourselves. You have given these people shelter, you have given them shelter in your country, and you have divided your properties among them so much so that they have now come out as your rivals. Nothing so fits us and the paupers of Quraysh as the ancient saying. And he came up with a very, very humiliating saying. He said that it is said in the saying that feed your dog to fatten it and it will devour you. Look, if you hold back your property from them, they will go elsewhere. And by God, when we return to Medina this time, the honorable ones will drive out from it the mean, dishonorable ones. Now, Zubillah min Salik, this was height of disrespect. This was height of disrespect and dishonor for Prophet Wasallam and for the companions also and for the immigrants also. And you know, when Abdullah bin Ubayi was saying all these words and he was like trying to instigate and incite the Ansar by all what he was saying, there was a young boy, Zaid bin Arkam. He was present in the assembly at that time. He heard all what Abdullah bin Ubayi had to say. And uh, when the assembly dispersed, 
uh, Zaid bin Arkham, he came to his uncle and he told him everything what Abdullah bin Ubayy had said. And the uncle informed Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called uh, Hazrat Zaid bin Arkham and asked him what had happened and he repeated the whole event word to word of what he had heard. And uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also tried to reconfirm. And he said that Zaid, perhaps you were displeased with Abdullah bin Ubayy and you might have been mistaken in hearing something or you might have just imagined that has, uh, Abdullah bin Ubayy had said this, but um, he came out and he swore that whatever he had told was actually what Abdullah bin Ubayy had said. And so Prophet Sallallahu called Abdullah bin Ubayy and asked him whether he had said all that or not. But uh, obviously hypocrites are what? They are liars and they tell lies and they swear. They swear with for their lies also. So he swore that whatever has been said, he had not said anything of the sort. And you know what happened was that the people of the tribe, they also uh, reproved of uh, Hazrat Zaid. And um, he was so upset. He was so upset. And the basic thing why Hazrat Zaid says that I was upset was, was not what the people and the leader of my tribe did think about me. What upset me the most was, what would Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam think about me? And what impression would he form about me that I am a liar, I am a hypocrite, or I made a false swear? So there it was. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed, revealed the verses of Surah Munafikun. And exactly in the verses of Surah Munafikun, which we will be reading soon, inshallah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, quote on quote, explained the words which Abdullah bin Ubay had said. And uh, uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, when he was revealed these verses, he came close to Zaid bin Arkham and he got hold of his ear lovingly. And he said that the boy's ear had heard and he had said the truth. And he said that I was so happy. And I was so happy that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has mentioned my tooth and has witnessed that what I had sworn for was true. And he was so happy about it that he said that in the rest of my life, there was not a single day that I did not cling to this true manner in throughout my life. And uh, we also learn from traditions that when this fight had just uh, broken up between the Ansar and the Mujahideen, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his wisdom, he ordered the people to move and uh, the people, uh, he ordered the people to set off immediately. And the army which had stopped over, they started traveling again and they marched for about like 30 hours at a stretch by the order of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And finally, when they became exhausted and they halted, they, as soon as they touched the ground, they fell asleep. So this was done purposely and very wisely. This was ordered by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this was done, uh, done with the purpose to distract them and to distract their minds away from that mutual fight so that the fight stops. And uh, we also learn from traditions that uh, when this news, it spread, then all the Ansar and all the Muhajireen, they were very angry with what Abdullah bin Ubayy had said and what the verses had confirmed. And they came over to Abdullah bin Ubayy and they advised him to go to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and request for his forgiveness. But he was furious and he retorted that you asked me, you people, you asked me to believe in him and I believed in him. You asked me to pay zakat in my property and I paid zakat. Now, now the only thing left is that I should bow down to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he stamped his foot and he went away angrily. And uh, when his son, Abdullah, he found out that his father had behaved like that, when they reached back Makkah, uh, Medina, Abdullah, the son of Abdullah bin Ubayi, he stood before his father and he took out his sword and he said that you had said that when we reached Medina, the honorable ones will drive out the mean ones. So now I will ensure, I will ensure that you will not enter Medina. And now you will know that who is honorable, you or Allah and his messenger. And by God, I will not you, let you enter Medina until and unless Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam orders me to do so. And when the whole uh, event, the news reached to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asked, that uh, tell Abdullah to let his father come home. 
And uh, this was the tolerance, the patience, the forbearance and forgiveness of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his open mindedness and his open heartedness, even despite the fact that all their hypocrisy had come, an out, come out and still he was tolerant to all of them. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Iza ja akal munafikuna kalu nashadu in nakala rasulullahi wallahu yalamu in nakala rasulu wallahu yashadu in al munafikina la kadibun. Allah says, When the hypocrites come to you, when the hypocrites they come to you and they say, we testify that you are the messenger of Allah and Allah knows that you are his messenger and Allah testifies that the hypocrites are liars. Then they have taken their oaths as a cover so they avert people from the way of Allah. Indeed, it was evil that they were doing. <coughs> we can recollect that throughout the Quran and in different surahs and in different uh, in different verses of Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been highlighting and narrating the, the manners, the behaviors, and the traits of the munafikin. And the purpose of all this in the verses of Quran is to make the believers recognize the traits and the manners of hypocrites. So after self-analysis, if they identify any one of those manners or uh, traits, then they can do what? After confession and after regret, they can repent and seek forgiveness and eradicate and eradicate all those manners and traits from their personality to save themselves from the very painful punishment that all the hypocrites have been promised in surah nisa as we've already gone through that they have been promised by allah that they will be in the lowest level of hellfire so to save ourselves from that azabun alim, that painful punishment, thus Allah mentioned the traits and manners of hypocrites so that we can identify themselves and save ourselves from that painful punishment. And more so also in our environment and in our companions, we identify those traits to help ourselves stay away from the walayat and from deep-rooted love and friendship of such persons and individuals and such company and environment also. So the first trait which we learn here in this verse is that they are liars. And this is also supported by what Allah said in um, Surah Al-Baqarah right at the start, that they are liars, they are falsifiers, they refuse the truth and they tell liars, uh, tell lies and they support the false and they are they go against the true teachings of Quran. So this is all their habit and manner as being liars. And the second uh, characteristic of the hypocrites, which has been mentioned in the second oath is that they make false oaths and pledges. And this is exactly what has been reported by the words of uh, uh, Hadith, a tradition in Muslim and Bukhari, that who is a hypocrite is that ayatul munafiku ruba. There are four traits of a hypocrite, is a hadasa qazaba, is a ahada akhlafa, is a tumana khana, is a khasama fajara. That he is not trustworthy. When he is given a trust, he is not trustworthy. He is um, he is cheatful with his oaths and with his pledges, and he is a liar, and he has bad manners and is abusive and ill-mannered. Worst number three, that is because they believed and then they disbelieved. So their hearts were sealed over and they do not understand. And when you see them, their forms please you. And if they speak, you listen to their speak. So here, the next thing which Allah is uh, narrating about the manner of the, of the hypocrites is that by their physical and outwardly worldly appearance, they look very refined. They look very refined, highly polished, having a very polite speech. They are soft-spoken, they are cultured, they are refined, and they carry themselves in a very courteous manner. But 
they are, there is a difference between their external and outwardly behavior and their internal state of affairs. And the next thing is, which Allah says, they are as if they are pieces of wood propped up. They think that every shout is against them. They are the enemy. So be aware of them. May Allah destroy them. How are they deluded? So here in this verse, explaining one of their traits, Allah has likened them with wooden planks. So what are wooden planks like? Wooden planks, they are brittle and they are hard. They are non-elastic and they are non-flexible. And if you try to bend a wooden plank, it would be just try to bend a wooden plank. It would not bend. It would break, but it would not bend. So it means what? That hypocrites are, they are stubborn. They are obstinate, egoistic, self-centered, conceited, and selfish group of people. Like wooden planks, they need support, but they do not extend support themselves. They are selfish and conceited. And saying that, that they think that every shout is against them means what? That they are highly insecure and they are covetous at heart also. And then Allah says, and when it is said to them, come, the messenger of Allah will ask forgiveness for you. They turn their heads aside and you see them awaiting while they are arrogant. So the next trait of the hypocrites is that they tend to be vain and they are proud, and they are obstinate, and they are arrogant. It is all the same for them, whether you ask forgiveness for them or do not ask forgiveness for them. Never would Allah forgive them. Indeed, Allah does not guide the defaintly disobedient people. So this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the punishment of the hypocrites. Is how cross, how severe, that even even the intercession of Prophet Sallallahu or even the seeking of forgiveness, even the seeking of forgiveness by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi would not avail them. As Allah says, lahum nasira, that when Allah mentions in Surah An-Nisa that the people, all those who are hypocrites, they will be in the lowest, lowest level of hellfire. And there Allah says, lahum nasira, that you will not find any person or anybody who will be helpful for them or who will be able to protect them and to see them or save them from hellfire. And this is exactly what this verse is highlighting also. Allahumma tuakhir qalbi min an nifaki. They are the ones who say, do not spend on those who are with the messengers of Allah until they disband. And to Allah belong the depositories of the heaven and the earth. But the hypocrites do not understand. They say, if we return to Medina, the more honored for power will surely expel their form, the more humble. And to Allah belongs all the honor and to his messenger and to the believers. But the hypocrites, they do not know. So the next manner of the hypocrites is that they stop their, their companions from helping, from supporting, or to work for protection of Islam, of the teachings of Quran and Hadith. And oh, you who have believed, let not your wealth, let not your wealth and your children divert you from the remembrance of Allah. And whoever does that, then those are the losers. Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. Rabbi a'ini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may we not be among those whose life involved in the commitments, in the activities, in the routines of their worldly, worldly activities of earning our livelihood, may it be our business, our agriculture, our jobs, our seminars, our conferences, or the activities and commitments regarding our children. May all these not be a deterrent for us to forget Allah or to leave the remembrance of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bless us all, bless us all with the tongue supple, with the remembrance of Allah, with a heart and a soul full of gratitude to Allah and a body, and a body which is patient in the obedience of Allah and spent, and spent in the way of Allah from what we have provided you when? 
provided you before death approaches one of you. And he says, my Lord, if only you would delay me for a brief term, so I would give charity and be among the righteous. That is exactly what Allah has also mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. Ya ayyuhallazina amanu anfiku mimma razzaqnaakum min qabli an ya'tiya yawmun la bayun fihi wa la khullatun wa la shifa'atun wal kafiruna humu zwalimun. Spend the path of Allah from all provisions which we have blessed you before the day comes when there will be no friendship, when there will be no intercession. And all those who fail to believe and who fail to spend in the path of Allah, they are the losers. They are the disbelievers. They are the wrongdoers. Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. And that is why exactly what Prophet sallallahu instructed all of us also in a tradition, he said, spend spend in the path of allah before death attends you and then you start saying give this to such and such and give this to such and such oh son of adam salam, at that time the property and wealth is not yours it is your heirs but never will allah delay a soul when it is time when its time has come and allah is acquainted with what you do Allahumma a'inni ala ghamaratil maut wa sakaratil maut. Allahumma a'inni ala ghamaratil maut wa sakaratil maut. Allahumma anis wahshati kabri. Allahumma anis wahshati hashri. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasana. Wakina azab al-nar. Wakina azab al-hashri. Wakina azab al-mizan. Wakina azab al-nar.